Honorable Tourism Ministers from Bangladesh, Indonesia and Sri Lanka, Reverend Buddhist monks from various countries across the world, delegates from various countries, Minister of State, Independent Charge, Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, Sri Alphonse Kananthanam, Ambassador of Japan to India, Excellency Kenji Hiramatsu, distinguished guests on the dais, ladies and gentlemen. I am happy to be here for the inauguration of the International Buddhist Conclave 2018. This is a gathering of eminent personalities associated with Buddhist thoughts and scholarship, with Buddhist heritage and monuments, and with the tourism industry that does so much to facilitate the Buddhist travel and pilgrimage circuit. In particular, I would like to welcome the delegates from approximately 30 countries who have come to India for this conclave and who will be part of this event as well as events in Maharashtra, Bihar and Uttar Pradesh over the next three days. I would also like to acknowledge the participation of Japan as a partner country in this conclave. India and Japan have much in common, but there are few links we treasure as much as our shared Buddhist heritage. Through thousands of years of human existence, India has been a strong house of history and culture, of faith and philosophy. Buddhism has been among India's greatest spiritual traditions. Many great locations associated with the life and teachings of Lord Buddha are found in India. These include Kapil Vastu, that is Piparva, where he spent his childhood, Bodh Gaya, where he attained enlightenment, Sarnath, where he delivered his first sermon, and Kusinagar, where he embraced Mahaparinirvana. Even after Lord Buddha's passing, monasteries, pilgrimage sites, universities and places of learning and worship that carried forward his work came up across India. Today, Buddhist heritage sites are to be found in virtually every state of India. Together, these are known to pilgrims, religious tourists and fascinated travelers as the Buddhist circuit. The Buddhist circuit in India is an important and revered set of destinations for the approximately 500 million strong community of Buddhists across Asia and other parts of the world. It is to facilitate such a travel and pilgrimage experience that this conclave has been organized and that the website and film dedicated to the Buddhist circuit have been formally launched. The practice of cultural and religious travel and tourism is not new to India. It goes back thousands of years and, in fact, visits from Buddhist pilgrims, monks and scholars from other countries and civilizations have been a proud feature of our history. This has been mutually enriching and in diverse ways. The voice of Buddhism from India to Asia and the transcontinental links that were created carried more than just spiritualism. They carried a rich cargo of knowledge and learning. They carried arts and crafts. They carried meditation techniques and even martial arts. Eventually, the many roads that the monks and nuns, those men and women of faith, carved out, became among the earliest trade routes. In that sense, Buddhism was the basis for an early form of globalization and of interconnectedness in our continent. It is these principles and values that must continue to guide us. 
I would emphasize that such thinking shapes the Indian tourism industry's approach to cultural and religious tourism. And it shapes the government of India's promotion of Buddhist themed tourism. Please do consider some measures taken in this regard. The introduction and expansion of e-visa schemes, which is an initiative of this government, facilities among others those tourists coming to experience India's Buddhist legacy. The government is also making earnest efforts to develop Buddhist heritage sites as even more welcoming destinations. I understand the Ministry of Tourism has identified the Buddhist circuit as one of the thematic circuits for development under its Swades Darshan scheme. Five projects with a combined outlay of more than 350 crore rupees have been sanctioned for the states of Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. It goes without saying that the government can do, cannot do everything on its own. Tourism is a multi-stakeholder enterprise. The private sector and civil society have substantial roles to play. And in terms of providing a safe and secure visitor experience, state and municipal administrations play a critical role. Of course, the business potential of tourism is immense. Across our world, the industry is a big job creator, especially for local households and local communities. In its essence, tourism, like Buddhism, is about people and empowering them to realize their potential. In, th in this context, I am happy to note that the Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, is organizing an investor summit as part of this enclave. The objective is to finalize business and investment plans for developing world-class infrastructure in the Buddhist heritage sites that have been identified. I am confident that the delegates to the investor summit, both from India and other countries, will give concrete shape to their proposals. I would also like to acknowledge support from international agencies that have contributed to the development of tourist infrastructure in the Buddhist circuit. The collaboration between the Japan International Cooperation Agency and the Government of India for the Ajanta Elora Conservation and Tourism Development Project is worth mentioning. This will conserve one of our most remarkable cultural sites for future generations as well as enhance the tourist experience for those visiting to Ajanta and Elora Capes. With loan assistance from the Japan International Cooperation Agency, the first phase of development of Buddhist circuit in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar too has been completed. The Union Ministry of Tourism and the state governments of Bihar and Uttar Pradesh are now cooperating with the International Finance Corporation, which is a part of the World Bank Group, on an integrated Buddhist circuit tourism development project. This will upgrade the quality of services for visitors. In conclusion, I must emphasize that while we should take advantage of our strengths, we also need to overcome issues that are limiting us from scaling up. There are issues related to limited market research, limited interpretation, and inadequate exhibiting and presentation of Buddhist circuit's history and narrative. While air services have expanded in the past few years, last mile connectivity, whether by way of road and rail, still has gaps that need to be filled. Pollution and environment change, environmental changes are other pressing concerns. Despite these nickeling problems, the potential is so large that it can only motivate us to move ahead with greater energy and vigor. I am confident that the combined expertise 
of the delegates at this conclave, conclave drawing inspiration from the wisdom and the problem solving techniques of Lord Buddha will lead our heritage tourism efforts to a more enlightened path. And with that, I wish the conclave and its sessions and sub-events all success. Thank you. Jai Hind.